In the last video, we started looking at the height field paths node that we made for Project Pegasus, and we used it to create some animal tracks across the terrain. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off and look at how we can use the node to create more human-like paths across the terrain with a little bit more user input guiding where the paths go. I'm gonna jump back inside of the path subnetwork. I'm gonna stop that from cooking because I didn't wanna sit there and wait for it to finish. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to sort of wrap all of this in a comment box. We're gonna call it animal, or just let's call it trails, there we go. And then we're gonna do another little bit of work off over to the side. So to begin with, I'll put down a null, which is going to grab the in height field, like so. And as usual, actually, I'm not gonna worry about an object merge. I'm just going to Alt and left click to create a reroute like so. And to keep things tidy, I'm gonna do the same over here. There we go. So now there's just one wire coming out of that. And I'm actually going to take the, um, I'm gonna take the anisotropic control points, connect points, sorry. And I'm gonna take the uh, this new occlusion mask. So. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this up and outside of the uh, the animal trails box because it's going to be more generic than that. Okay, very good. In which case I'm going to remove this reroute. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. And we're going to then actually drag this down there, create a reroute from that. Like so. It's just trying to be a bit organized here. And uh, the same is true of these curves. So I'm gonna wire that into all of these. Okay, great. So this reroute can go, and now I'm actually going to drag reroutes out. These two, here we go. So we have our in height field, and then we have the height field with this occlusion mask. And then we have our kind of curves representation of the landscape like so. I'm gonna move these things around a little bit. There we go, I tend to use object merges, but for some reason I decided to do it with reroutes in here. Then we're gonna put down a new P height field, uh, height field paths. I'm gonna wire the height field into the first input, of course, the curves into the second input. And now it's just a matter of uh, just defining the points on our terrain. Um, that we want to use as our waypoints again. So just to begin with, like usual, I'm gonna do a little scatter. I'm gonna set the total count to two. And uh, then I'm just going to cause this to update. Let's have a little look what we get. Okay, so we get a path. And um, this time um, I am also going to add the slope avoidance as before. So slope and raw cost, okay. I'm going to uh, increase the contrast of both of these controls, sort of like look direct the uh, the paths a little bit more, trying to avoid uh, slopes and trying to avoid change, like sort of going, when you do have to go up a slope, trying to avoid going directly up it, wiggling instead. So that's what people do. Although maybe not to that extent. <laughs> so I might increase the distance cost scale factor a bit to make it slightly more sensible. There we go. And um, then uh, I'm also going to make it take into account the ambient occlusion once more. So AO, and remember not rate of change, raw cost. Rate of change is really just useful for height, uh, although maybe you can think of other inventive uses for it. And now this time, um, I think humans are going to tend to prefer to walk along ridge lines instead of getting their feet wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert that. And that, that looks more like the kind of paths, you know, a human might take across the landscape. And it's definitely gonna give you better views as a player uh, if you navigate along the ridge lines as opposed to along the valleys. Uh, maybe you want to mix and match both. You can, of course, use more than one height field paths node. Okay, so we've got our path, um, which is kind of look directed to be a kind of humanish path. Um, there, actually, I think increasing the power of that made it a bit wigglier and again, a little bit nicer looking. Um, so what if we wanted to decide where the paths were and um, where they ended? Well, in that case, we're not going to be doing any scattering. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use the interactively add points. There we go, so there it is. And I'm gonna delete the scatter. And then we're going to just actually look at the interactive add points. <clears throat> no, we're not, we're going to look at the terrain, okay? 
And when we're going to go to and click on the interactive data points, we're going to hit enter on the keyboard. And this simply allows us to click somewhere and it will add a point, which we can use as a waypoint. So I know that around this kind of sculpted area here is where the sort of player is going to start and where the town is. So I'm going to look at that from a top-down perspective and I'm going to add a waypoint. There we go. Okay, so we have a waypoint. We can't see it, but it's there. Uh, if I hit escape and we go and have a little look, we can see that there indeed is the waypoint. Okay, so I'm going to again preview the height field and uh, I'm going to now add. Actually, that's it. That's it. That's going to be our sole waypoint. It's going to be our start point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that node and call this one endpoints. I'm going to clear all of those points I added and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit select it, hit enter, and look at it from a top down perspective. And I'm going to decide everywhere I want the player to navigate to, uh, everywhere I want the paths to lead to. And I'm basically going to choose the tops of these three mountains. There we go. All right, let's do that for a start. Have a little look. There are our waypoints. And uh, right now we can see that they're all kind of uh, on the floor. Um, and I actually don't want that. I want them to be conforming to the, the terrain. So uh, I'm going to click Snap to input on both of them. Uh, and nothing changes. Well, why is that? It's because we don't have any input right now. And I'm going to wire in our curve network to be the input. And there we have now got those waypoints snapped. OK, whoops, didn't mean to do that. OK, so lastly, I need to create a group for each of those. Actually, let's just do one at a time. One at a time. So we're going to make a point group. I'm going to call this one ends. I'm going to call this one starts. And then we're going to merge that up and wire them in to our points. Okay. So by default, it's actually finding the paths from everywhere to everywhere, which isn't what we want. It's a little bit more chaotic. So we want to be a bit more organized and make sure that everything comes out from this start point. So I'm going to make sure that start points are set to starts and then the end points are set to ends. And now we can see that we're getting those paths leading just up to those points that we've interactively added. You can also see that I did a pretty bad job of selecting the top of the mountain there. So I'm going to go back and redo my ends and maybe add a few more of them too. And the way I like to do this is I like to actually put down a little object merge, like so, where I'm going to copy in the, uh, the, uh, the height field there, like so. Maybe I'll actually get the textured height field, OK? And then um, I'm going to merge the output of my add, my add points with this in height field. So we're able to look at the points and that together. And because the points are just points and we can't really see them very easily, I'm going to do a quick copy to points. We're going to get the points to be the points. And then the geometry is just going to be a sphere, like so. It doesn't have to be a polygon, it can just be a primitive. And then I'm going to increase the scale of that sphere to, say, 50, pretty big. And then we have a look. OK, now we can we can clearly see where our points are being added. And um, I'm just going to now go and clear the destinations I added. I'm going to split the, uh, the view here to be two views stacked. So we have our perspective view and we have our top-down view. And now I'm going to go to the endpoints, hit Enter once more. Whoopsie, that was not what I meant to do. Hit Yes, go, and then go into the viewport and hit Enter once more. And now what I can do is I can, of course, click in the bottom of the graphic viewport and I can see where those are being created in the perspective viewport. So I'm going to try that again, try and get the very peak of that mountain. And that's good enough. And the same up here for the peak. But I'm also going to add a couple more because our players like to explore. And there's one more kind of peak, sort of somewhat peaky peak over there. And then maybe also this plateau off behind the mountain would be a nice place to go and explore. And finally, yeah, we'll go for this kind of like valley. Maybe there's another another town which we could develop uh, later and add to that world. And I think maybe one more down here as well in the bottom left. There's kind of like a little nice little uh, nice little ridge up there. We can have a look kind of over the sea from that side. And you know you could really just keep keep adding these to be fair, but. What I would do actually is, uh, we're going to go back to single view now. What I would do actually is I would define these other main waypoints. And then you could, of course, use another height field to paths with some more points that you add and then have each of these kinds of hubs 
uh, have paths that they're in turn connected to. And uh, this would allow you to sort of build up a more interesting and complex network of roads. So let's have a look at that Highfield Paths node. And now we can indeed see that we're getting paths to all of these places, uh, which seem to try to follow somewhat logical routes, although, you know, occasionally it's limited to what the pathfinding algorithm can do. So it does some slightly crazy stuff. Um, I'm still kind of surprised it's not trying to walk up this part of the slope. So what I might do then is, is increase the cost of the slope. And there we go. Yeah, so now it's trying to avoid going up the steepest portions of the slope a little bit more aggressively. And there, yeah. And without without massively changing, you know, the, the course of those paths. So as you start to hone in on these parameters, you'll find that the, um, the, 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 the controls become a little bit less drastic in the change. When you're adding new ones and when you're first setting it up, your yeah, changing parameters can produce drastically different roads. Uh, but as you're kind of like tweaking, um, like making small tweaks towards the end, you'll find that instead of dramatically changing the course of the roads, it just sort of like alters them uh, a little bit uh, in a way that sort of feels more controllable. Okay, so now we have uh, paths coming out from our, uh, our main hub, uh, which lead to all of these interesting places to explore, uh, producing quite uh, sort of natural uh, looking paths that humans might have created in their sort of exploration of this, of this world. And um, to differentiate these from the uh, animal trails, I'm gonna to go to the modify height field output tab, and I'm gonna increase the width to 10 meters, like so. I'm gonna hide the, uh, the, the sweep and the line so we can just see the, the terrain modifications and just look at the height modification for now. Okay, uh, flatten width. So I'm not getting as flat, oh yeah, there we go. There we can really see the difference there. Uh, this path sneaking up around the back of that mountain and then working its way up to the top. We turn back on height and mask like so. We can uh, increase the mask width to 15 maybe. Um, yeah, okay, maybe maybe 15 is good. Um, then last of all, we're just gonna create a new output for this subnetwork. Ah, before I even do that, I'm gonna create a new file cache because even though this is quicker, it's still quite a heavy operation. I'm gonna call this human paths cache. and save to disk. Okay, output one. And of course we need to repeat the sort of the height field layer operation that we did over on the left. So we'll put down a height chef layer. The cache goes into the first input, subtract the incoming height field. There we go, that gives us just our Ah, uh, yeah, and I just want to do that just the height so that our mask doesn't get messed up. I'll just double check I did the same over there. I did, okay. Um, and then I can, of course, wrap all of this in another box called human paths, just to be organized. Our cache is out, our stuff is on disk. And now we have these two outputs. I'm gonna do a quick remap of the second one. And then just for the sake of speed, in this case, I would probably normally make them two separate uh, masks, but for the sake of moving things along here, we're going to do a max operation on the masks, like so. And we're also going to do another height field layer operation where we get the second. There we go, that's now the human roads being layered in there as well. And then the masks is the combination uh, interesting. The remap, the remap. Can we see both? No, we can't. Uh, is it, oh, it's because it's mask, not masks. There we go. And now we have our human masks being clearly uh, differentiated from our animal trails. And we can see that represented uh, on our terrain there. And I may just even push the difference a little bit more by making our human paths a bit more aggressive. And this is the way that I added paths to our terrain for Project Pegasus. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at importing these uh, and setting up the material with the extra layers needed to drive the final result inside of Unreal. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.